Hi there, my name is Savas Androniku and I'm a pediatric radiologist with 20 years experience. Today I'm going to teach you some simple points for doing point of care ultrasound of the lung for diagnosing pneumonia. You'll notice that a lot of these doctors being taught on this video are not radiologists and the ultrasound lecture is directed towards them. This is me doing an ultrasound on a child in a small rural hospital. The child is most comfortable in the mother's arms and of course I'm getting some help with the buttons because I'm not familiar with the equipment. This is a transverse orientation of the probe and it's not important which is right and left in lung ultrasound because there's no anatomy other than the lung itself. Now you can see that there are no ribs in the imaging view because we are imaging between ribs in a transverse orientation. I can turn the probe into a longitudinal position again not very important which is the upper or lower part and one can then demonstrate ribs which help you see where the lung starts the lung starts immediately deep to the ribs and one can see what we call the lung sliding sign which is that very bright line which is shimmering on the image this actually represents the pleural interface it's very important to identify the pleural line because you know where the lung starts and it's also important that this line be continuous and intact. An interrupted pleural line is an important sign, particularly when I demonstrate consolidation to you. So the first thing to find is the pleural line or the lung sliding sign. It's important that this shimmers, that you can see active movement. A second thing to note is that there are parallel lines to the pleural line. These are called A-lines. A-lines are not important in themselves other than to indicate that you have a rated lung underneath. So we know that the pleural line is solid and intact, it's shimmering, and there are multiple A-lines parallel to it which represent re reverberation artifacts. B-lines are these torch-like white shadows starting at the pleural surface. They're only important if there are many of them. So more than three B-lines or more than three torches shining from the pleural line are pathological. You can see here that a lot of the B-lines are confluencing. We call this a compound B-line. Now the importance of B-lines is still debatable, but they probably represent interstitial thickening, such as occurs with interstitial fluid or pneumonia. This is the big thing, the pneumonia. You can see a pneumonia is darker than the rest of the lung, but more importantly, you can see that the pleural line is interrupted. So these pneumonias abut the pleural surface and obliterate the pleural line. They are dark, they are wedge shaped, and the little bright lines you see within these pneumonias represent bronchograms. This is how you would encounter a pneumonia when actively doing the ultrasound. This is a smaller pneumonia, but again the pleural line is interrupted, and there's a dark area in the lung underlying this, which represents the pneumonia, and multiple echogenic or bright lines within it representing air bronchograms. Sometimes one can see very small areas of pneumonia. We call these sub-centimeter consolidations. Now whether these are important or not clinically is not known. Deep to the pneumonia one can see B lines emanating from the surface of the pneumonia rather than the pleural line. We call that a shredded B line. Hepatization of the lung is just a word we use when the lung looks solid and starts looking like liver. The bronchograms start looking like blood vessels within the liver and sometimes this can be confusing. Now I'm going to show you how to use the knobs and buttons to make your image better. There are only three important knobs. We'll start with the first which is the depth button. This button will help you make the picture bigger or smaller but it also affects the depth of visualization. So this doctor will turn the depth button anti-clockwise first and you will see that the picture progressively gets smaller but you see a lot deeper in the lung. This may be desirable. Turning the button in a clockwise direction will make the image bigger but you won't see as deep into the lung. The second button of importance is the gains. You can look for the word gains and turn the button. This results in either a brighter image or a darker image. This is for you to decide how bright or how dark the image should be. But an image that is too dark or too bright obliterates the differences between tissues. 
And of course, we're looking at contrasting differences between tissues to make a diagnosis. You see how bright the lung has become now compared to the underlying lip. One last setting that I'm going to show you is what we call the focal zone. There's a little indicator which is pointed to now on the side of the screen which indicates the position of your focal zone. You can adjust this by turning a knob or flicking a lever. You will see that the indicator will either lie more superiorly or more inferiorly. The position of the focal zone indicator is where your image is clearer. So here the focal zone is more to the top which is superficial in the patient and makes the areas just under the ribs be better seen. Turning the focal zone knob so that the indicator lies deeper in the lung will make that portion of the lung more visible and clearer, and clearer to see. So the focal zone now has been dropped to the depth of the lung so that that is the most important part and is the part that you will see best. With those three options you will get by. The next important thing is to make sure you cover the whole chest with your image. Now you can start anteriorly or posteriorly. My favorite is starting with the baby in the mother's arms and doing the back. But make sure you turn the baby around and do the front also. We also scan from the middle of the patient as you will see here. So starting near the spine and then moving over to the lateral surface of the chest. You can then progressively drop from one rib space into the other until you reach the abdominal organs and see the liver or the spleen depending on each side. Once you've done one side, then don't forget to do the other side and make sure there's no pneumonia involving the other lung. I always start sagittal and then turn transverse. This is how we turn the baby around and you can see babies are less comfortable being taken out of the mother's arms. This is a longitudinal position with a baby in the in the supine position and you can see the rib markings and just deep to those the pleural line and A lines. So this is a relatively normally rated lung with a moving baby. So we're having success with a crying moving baby and getting an adequate image. There's no pneumonia on this image. We've now turned the probe transverse and you'll see that the operator has the probe in the auxiliary space. Now I'm helping the operator to turn this into the oblique transverse because the anterior ribs lie obliquely. This way you can avoid getting ribs in the image. If one turns into the two transverse as in this position, it will demonstrate ribs. So always turn your probe obliquely to fit between ribs, then you will get an image like this. You see a lot of lung without the ribs. You can see the pleural line and multiple A lines. This is normal aerated lung. These are some pitfalls. Sometimes looking at the spleen will look just like a pneumonia. You can see the spleen is dark and air in the stomach deep to the spleen looks like shredded B lines at the deep end of a pneumonia. Very similar to the pneumonia in your right side of your picture. So always be aware when you're low in the chest and approaching the spleen or the liver so as not to call these organs pneumonia. That's not to say a pneumonia cannot occur in the lower lobes. I'm scanning here quite low on the patient and you can see what we call a curtain sign. This is a transverse view and you can see the lung comes into the picture as if we're drawing a curtain over the liver. This is one way to know you're imaging the liver. You can see a clear demarcation between the brighter aerated lung and the liver which is darker and has a normal liver characteristics. I advise lots of practice in the lower lung bases to make sure you don't call a pneumonia. The last thing I'm going to show you is an effusion which is relatively easy to see. Effusion is water and therefore it's black on ultrasound and will usually surround the lung edge. You can see the effusion as a band of black separating the chest wall and the start of the rib margin from the consolidated lung edge in this case. This is a complex effusion where you see strands and loculations. Now someone putting a needle may not confirm an effusion in this case. The underlying lung is hypoechoic and contains air bronchograms. If you see the lung flapping in the effusion, it's probably nice, simple fluid, whereas a fixed position lung indicates complex fluid. I want to thank everyone who is doing lung ultrasound in the field 
and all my colleagues for helping me develop this ultrasound module for you. Thank you very much.